We are starting this series called Haunted because during the Halloween season, all right, people, some people, not every person, but people like to uh, be scared a little bit. Anybody go to a haunted house before? Okay. All right. That's great. Um, Anybody a fan of scary movies? Weirdos. Okay. I don't understand that. Why do you do that? Uh, I don't, I don't enjoy scary movies that much. Um, my wife really, really cannot stand scary movies. Like, there's movies that aren't even scary that she's like, you know, that just looks like it could be scary. We should probably not watch that. Um, I kid you not, during this season, uh, I've been watching a lot of playoff baseball, which we don't need to talk about that, okay? Um, I would rather not think about playoff baseball, but I've been watching a lot of TV. And you know what they show a lot of commercials of during this time of year? Horror movies, okay, because it's October, and it's scary season, and so I'll be sitting on the couch, and I'll be watching the baseball game, and this literally happened to us the other night. I'm just sitting there watching the baseball game. My wife likes to watch the baseball games, too, so she's sitting there, and it goes to commercial break, and the first commercial that plays is is a scary horror movie commercial, and my wife... I, this, is, this is real. She screams, and she yells at me. She's like, Gordon! And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's not my fault. And she's mad at me. And I'm like, I didn't choose this commercial. How is this my fault? It's not like I didn't. I'm scared, too. I didn't want this commercial to play. And for like five minutes, she's angry at me for this thing that I had no control over. All right? And that's, that's October. That's spooky season, okay? You, you get scary stuff. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever been scared by something, like really scared by something, how long does it take you to get over that fear if you're like truly terrified of something? A long time. A really long time. Like every time you see that thing or every time something reminds you of that thing, that fear, that feeling is brought right back up, okay? And so, we've decided to call this series Haunted, not because we're going to talk about scary movies or uh, horror things this whole series, but because there are some real things in life, boys, there's some real things in life that if we are not careful... We can use them improperly. We can make bad decisions with them, and they will not only come back to haunt us, but they could potentially haunt other people if we are not careful with the way we use them and how we treat them and our responsibility with them. And so for the next three weeks, we're going to go through this series called Haunted, and we're going to look at three different things, three different areas that the Bible speaks on, on how very clearly we are supposed to use things wisely, and yet if we're not careful... Oftentimes, they can come back and haunt us and haunt people in our lives. So let me pray, and then we'll jump into the first topic of this morning. Lord, thank you for this room. Thank you for these students. I pray that as we jump into this series, um, that we can just dive in and just hear this wisdom, hear this advice as yours and coming from you, Lord. I pray that um, we just think through these passages, these points, and that we do our best to just go out and live a life that is glorifying to you. Lord, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, today what we are talking about, it says it on the top of your note sheet. Can you guess what the first thing is that if we are not careful, it is going to haunt us? What is it? Your words or speech, the way that we use our language. Titled on the top of your note sheet, it says spooky speech. We are talking about how if we are not careful, the words that we use can do a lot of damage. The words that are used towards us can do a lot of damage. Words are something that they can be said to you, and if it is hurtful, and if it is mean, it can haunt you for a very, very long time. All right, an example of this in my own personal life. When I was uh, probably eight years old, I uh, was playing baseball on a team, and my coach, he, he decided, my name is Gordy. It is very close to the word Gordo. And so my coach, he he reminded him of that. And so in his brain, he was like, I'm going to call this kid on my team Gordo. And he called me Gordo. And he kept calling me Gordo. Do you know what Gordo means in Spanish? 
It means fat. And I didn't even know this. I was completely oblivious. I was like, ah, whatever. You're just calling me Gordo. It's fine. Until some real funny, nice guys on my baseball team knew what it meant. And you know what they started to do? They started to be like, uh, you know what Gordo means? It means fat. And they started to make fun of me. And they started to laugh at me. And every time my coach would call me Gordo, they would sit there whispering to themselves, ah, it means fat. And you know what eight-year-old Gordy did in that moment? Yeah, I went home brokenhearted, crying, just devastated because the kids on my baseball team were making fun of me. And, like, they were hurting my feelings. And the, all year long this took place. Because my, my coach, I don't even blame him. He didn't even know it was taking place. He didn't mean anything mean by it. He was just like, oh, it's a fun nickname for this kid on my team. But years after, because it happens all the time, okay, I go by Gordy. And people often go, that reminds me of Gordo. And so people have called me that many times in my life. And now it's fine. But, like, up until high school, Somebody would call me Gordo, and I would be thrown back to the eight-year-old that was, like, just crushed by this coach calling me that. And, and it's just the point of, I don't know if there's been a situation in your life where that has happened to you, but I'm sure for all of us in this room, I don't know what the word is, I don't know what the, the phrase is, I don't know what, what somebody has said to you, but we all have language. We all have things that we have been called, we have had said to us that hurt that might have happened a few years ago, and yet it still hurts us. It still reminds us of that. It still brings up some pain in your life. Maybe a close friend said it to you. Maybe a family member said it to you. Maybe just a random person that you didn't get along with at school said it to you. But it reminds you of that pain and that hurt. That is the way words work. They are powerful. They are effective. And they can also do a whole lot of damage if we're not careful. So go to James chapter 3. James chapter 3 is going to walk us through the power and danger of words. James is in your New Testament. It took me forever to find it last night. So uh, to help you out, it is between the book of Hebrews and 1 Peter. Uh, in your New Testament, it's a pretty small book, so it might take you a minute. You can use the table of contents if you need to. All right, there is absolutely zero shame in using the table of contents. When you're there, say spooky. Wow, you guys are fast. Okay, great job. No, I did not say say Gordo, okay? This is, this is a test on how you all use your language and you're failing. <laughs> Last night I uh, also used this and they all immediately started, started to call me Gordo. So apparently uh, you guys learned nothing from my sermon is what I'm, what I'm getting at here. James chapter 3. Verse 2 is where we are going to start. Keep this open as well because we're going to read a little bit, pause, read a little bit more, pause. So don't just close it. Keep it open as we go through this, okay? James chapter 3, verse 2 says this. It says, We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. We're going to pause there. James begins, and he says, let me tell you the power of your words, the power of the language you have. James, James starts writing, and he says, what are some of the most powerful things that I can think of? All right, you got to go back to that day and age, okay, a few thousand years ago, and they didn't have as crazy powerful things as we do now. They weren't as advanced. They didn't have these inventions. So James starts to think his day and age. He goes, what are some of those powerful things I can think of? All right, he goes, animals. One of the most powerful animals that they were accustomed to in that day and age was horses. They had a lot of horses. They used horses for transportation. And let's be honest, anybody ride horses in here? Horses are pretty powerful animals, okay? If you decided to get in a fight with a horse 1v1, sorry, but that horse is probably going to win, 
okay? I, I don't even care if it's like a mini pony. That's still probably going to beat you, okay? All it takes is one kick from that horse, and you're done, all right? That horse wins. The horse is a powerful creature. In fact, all it would take would be, would be for me to get like within 100 feet of that horse, and it would win, okay? I'm allergic. It would take me out before it even got close to me, all right? My throat would swell up, and I'd just die. That's how it would work, okay? Horses are powerful, but guess what? If you want to ride a horse, it's possible. Now, it takes a little bit of training, a little bit of getting used to, but people are very, very successful at controlling and riding horses. Why? Because they know that if you put this tiny little bit in its mouth, you can get the horse to do whatever you want it to do. You can get the horse to go in the direction you want it to go. A mighty, powerful animal can be controlled by this tiny thing. And James goes, if that doesn't make the point uh, good enough for you, think of a massive giant ship. In that day and age, that was probably one of the greatest inventions that they had come up with at that time was the fact that you could sail across the open ocean on these things called boats and ships. And so he says, this giant boat, this big, powerful thing, when you compare the size of a boat to the size of the rudder, they're not even comparable. The rudder is tiny compared to the overall size of the boat, and yet the rudder is what controls it. The rudder is what decides where it goes, what what direction it heads in, and the rudder is controlled by human beings steering that boat, steering that ship. James says the tongue, your words, your speech is the same way. When you look at the size of your body, your mouth, your tongue, it it is not very large. It's pretty insignificant. And yet, it can do the most damage of anything, if you're not careful with it. And so, the first thing you have to write down this morning, the first point James is trying to make is this. Your words are one of the strongest powers in the world. Your words are one of the strongest powers in the world. If you think about it, most conflict, most drama, most pain in the world today is caused by people using their words in a negative way, all right? All you, in today's day and age, it is so much easier to do this, right? Like every single one of us probably in this room, uh, maybe not everyone, but has one of these things right here. They have a phone, okay? And if you don't have a phone, you probably have an access to a phone, okay? And you know what this does? It does a lot of amazing things, but it also has made it easier than ever to use our words improperly, All right, all you have to do is like if I'm upset at Matt with something, okay? But like few, like 20, 30 years ago, uh, your parents in their day and age, you know what they had to do if I'm like, I'm mad at Matt? They had to go to this thing in their home called the landline, all right? You're like, I don't even know what that is, all right? Nobody had cell phones. You'd have to, first of all, you'd have to know Matt's phone number, then you'd have to type it in, you'd have to call him up, and first off, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Groth would probably answer, and so you'd be like, hello. Can I speak to Matthew? And then they'd have to go find Matt, and you'd have to say mean things to him that way. Or if you didn't have his phone number, all right, but you knew where Matt lived, you'd have to, like, hop on your bicycle and, like, pedal down the road and then go up to the door and be like, and then Matt would come to the door maybe, and you'd be like, Matt, you smell weird, all right? And you'd say it straight to his face. That's not that easy, right? Like, it takes a little bit more courage, a little bit more bravery. You have to be a little bit more bold to do that. Now, if I want to say something mean to Matt, I can be like, oh, I'm just going to send Matt a text. And I could just send, Matt, you smell funny. And it's so much easier. Or if I don't even want to say it to Matt's face, I could just go on social media and I can just announce that to the world if I want to. I could create an anonymous profile and just say that if I want to. It is so much easier to be mean now, to say hurtful stuff now because of the world we live in. And if you look around, like, all the time, you see people causing arguments, causing fights, breaking apart friendships, breaking apart families because of the words they use. There is literally wars started because people use their words improperly. If you watch the news, you're going to see a whole lot of people angry and using their words improperly, starting conflict, starting drama, starting pain. And James says... If you can't figure out how to control your words, you are using one of the strongest powers in the world for bad, for hurtful things, 
James continues, and he says, if that doesn't help you understand enough, let me describe this even more. He said uh, in verse 5, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. He continues, verse 6, the tongue also is a fire. In a world of evil among the parts of the body, it corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of, it, of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Pretty intense. Like, you just pay attention to, like, the extreme words used here. James does not hold, hold back. He just goes all out on the danger of your words. But the part that I uh, think makes the most sense in my brain is he compares it to fire. He compares it to a spark. Here's the thing with fire. We're all used to, we all know about fire. Is fire good or bad? Both. It is both. It really just depends. Like, it is not really either good or bad. It just depends on how you use it, right? Fire is amazing. We need fire for a lot of things in life, all right? Fire is a lot, does a lot of amazing stuff for the life we live every single day. Without fire, we'd be in a lot of trouble. Without fire, uh, a lot of things that we enjoy every single day would be taken away from us. So fire does a lot of good. But here's the thing. Fire also is one of the most dangerous things that is out there if we are not careful. Fire, if you you put fire in the wrong place and leave it unattended, what happens? Harper's foot gets burned. Exactly. All right? It can cause a lot of damage. All of a sudden, a fire gets out of hand, and it can be unstoppable. There's been two times in my life, because Uh, Where we live, it's very dry around here, and fires can get out of hand. There's been two times in my life where I've had to evacuate my house because of fires in the area, all right? And uh, I think it was 2017 or 2018, um, the fires actually got so close to where I live, my family's house, that it actually burned down a couple houses on our street. And and I did not fully understand the power of fire until we were like out of our house for like a week and then we got permission to go back to our home and we were driving down our neighborhood, our street, and our house was completely fine, thankfully, but we drive by our neighbor's house and it wasn't like completely burned down, but like half of it had like completely burned and caved in. And all of a sudden in that moment, it was like, wow, if that was my home, I'd be devastated. If that was my life, it would be turned upside down. And that's the power of fire. If you use it incorrectly, it can cause crazy amounts of damage. It can be almost unstoppable. It can get out of hand. And so the second thing to write down is your words are under your control. They are under your control. James is saying it is up to you how you use them. It is up to you what comes out of your mouth. It is up to you the language that you choose to use. Is it going to be uplifting? Is it going to be hurtful? That's, that's your decision. And so be wise, be smart about the words that you use. Because here's the impact words can make on not only you, but the people around you. Third thing to write down. Your words can mean nothing to you, but everything to someone else. Your words can mean nothing to you, but everything to someone else. Has anyone ever had somebody say a hurtful joke about you before? Probably all of us at some point in our life. Here's the thing. When someone makes a hurtful joke about you, how long do you think it takes them before they forget that they made that joke and they stop thinking about it? 30 seconds, 5 minutes, not long, all right? Maybe if you remind them, they would remember that they said it, but they, they move on very, very quickly because to them, it costs them nothing, it came out so easily, and they forgot about it quickly. But to, the, but to you, how long did it take you to forget that they said that about you? Yeah, you probably haven't forgotten. It's probably still there in your brain. It costs you a great deal. That's the power of words. 
And uh, they've actually done studies to, to pay attention to the impact it makes on a human brain when people say negative things about you, okay? And so to make this point, I need a volunteer here uh, for this. You can't, uh, you can't be a good artist for this, though, okay? So if you're good at art. All right, Harper and Lonnie, I'm going to take both of you, okay? One of you gets to draw, one of you gets to hold this. All right, Lonnie claimed drawing, okay? Harper, you hold this. Uh, Lonnie, I need you to draw a picture of me in like 30 seconds, okay? Here we go. Lonnie's going to start. She's going to, this is good. Hey, hey, pipe down over there, okay? This is good. This is good. Yeah. Man. Yep. Yep. Sorry, I wore a different hat today, but that's typically what I'm wearing. <laughs> is that my nose ring? Wow. Good. Gonna need to do anything else? Oh, oh, good. There you go. Perfect. Good, good. Look kind of like a Lego figure. All right, beautiful. There we go. How do you hold that up so everybody can see? Show that the whole crowd. Beautiful, great artwork. Okay. Now, uh, this is this is, might be a struggle for a lot of you in this room. I need you guys to say nice things about me, okay? You think you can do that? All right, last night people really struggled, okay? You can write the nice things that you hear all the way around this, okay? What? Oh, Cordy is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Parker. Very skinny. Thank you. This is good for my mental health. Uh, Noah, way in the back. You're what? Uh, what about funny? Not funny looking. Just put funny, okay? Uh, what else, Joe? Beautiful eyes. This is kind of getting weird. I don't know if I like this. <laughs> yes. Oh, very good wife. That's true. All right. She's wonderful. Yes, Eli. What? I'm not answering. Taking that one. Yes, Autumn. Cool hats. There we go. This is good. Jordan. Padres fan. That is a great thing, kind of, right now. Not really. Uh, yes, in the back. My hands? Oh, on the... I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, she likes that I have no hands on this, is the point she's making. All right, that was good. That was great, okay? So many nice things about me. Now, here's the thing. I need you guys... To say one mean thing about me. <laughs> Not too mean, okay? I'm still human. Don't make me cry. Hudson. What? I mean, that was like a, like just something that's easy to write down. Yes. E emo? Oh, that's true. I'm in mourning because the Padres lost. Okay. Seems like they already made the decision. They just wrote Gordo, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Here's the point we're making. Matt, no, that's you, okay? Here's the point. Thank you all for your help. That was great. You got really excited about insulting me. Uh, they have done studies to show the impact of negative words on the human brain. And they have figured out that in order to counteract one mean thing said about somebody, it takes at least, sometimes more, 10 positive things to be said about you to have the impact on your brain that one negative thing does. Is there music playing over here? Hey. Shh. The point being... That's the way the human brain works. It tends to focus on, dwell on, think about hurtful, negative things more than positive stuff. And so understand that. The next time you go, I'm going to make a joke about somebody, and it, and it might be hurtful, but it's going to be funny. Think for a second and go, man, it is going to take 10 or more positive things to be said to that person for them to get over that negative thing that I'm going to say. All right? Give it a round of applause to our artists here. They get a, yeah, you can keep that if you want. That's all yours. That's the point, though, with this. All you. We have to be so careful with the words that we say. 
Because we have no idea the impact that it's making inside somebody. And in the same way, we should surround ourselves with people that are going to say nice things to us because if we're not careful and we surround ourselves with hurtful, mean people, that's the impact that's going to be going on inside of you is you're going to be taking all those things in and it's going to be hurting and you're going to be believing that about yourself. James finishes this passage this way, verse 9. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water water. Here's the point James is trying to make. He says, with the same mouth, we praise God and we curse God. He says, that's not the way it should work. A stream cannot produce fresh water and salt water. That's not the way it works. It can only produce one. And so the same thing goes with the language we use. We have to stand for what we believe in. I see this happen all the time, myself included. Christians are really good at standing at church, in church service, up front during worship, using their voices to praise Jesus. And then as soon as they get out of church, as soon as it's done, what do they do? They start going to their friends and they start gossiping with each other about other people. They pull out their phone and they start texting mean things to one another. They start making jokes at one another's expense. And God goes, weren't you five minutes ago worshiping me? You can't do both. That's not the way it works. Your voice should be meant to praise God. That's the way it works. The fourth thing to write down in your note sheet is your words are the easiest way to lead someone to Jesus or push them away. Lead someone to Jesus or push them away. I have a close family friend and, uh, This is a true story. I haven't checked in with him for a few years, so I don't know what the update is on it now. But he didn't grow up in a Christian home, all right? So him and his sister, they weren't Christians growing up. And then uh, he started to go to church at the end of high school, and uh, he met Jesus. He became a Christian, and he was going to a young adult's youth group right out of high school. And he decided, my sister needs to know about Jesus. She needs Jesus in her life. And so he invited his sister to church, and she came, and... Unfortunately, some people at that group knew who she was, knew her from high school or knew her from her past. And so what they did was uh, they talked poorly about her. They talked behind her back. They were rude to her face. They used their language in a way that was not kind and was not Christ-like. And she gave it a try a few times, but because of the hurt and the pain she experienced by Christians at church, as far as I know, she decided, I'm never going back to church again, Christian. Christ is not for me. I don't want that if that's the way Christians behave. And maybe something has changed. I haven't asked him about it in a few years, but like 10 years after that took place, his sister still had not given Jesus another chance because of the power of words. And so in this room, understand your words are either the easiest way to bring people to Jesus or the easiest way to push people away from Jesus all depending on how you use them. If people know that you're a Christian, they're going to make an opinion on Jesus based off the words that you use. And so the last thing to write down with this is this, your words should be used for helping, not haunting. Goes with our theme here. Your words should be used for helping, loving, uplifting, praising, encouraging other people, not haunting them. Don't say words that are going to stick with them negatively for a long time. Don't be that person in their brain where if they see you like five years from now, all they remember is that negative stuff you said to them. All they remember was that joke you made one time. Be people that live differently, that stand out at your school. Be people that use your words differently so that people go, why do you talk like that? Why don't you make those jokes? Why don't you use that language? And you can point them to Jesus because of the words that you use. That's the type of people you should be. The same thing also goes with the words that you use about yourself. Some of us in this room, we just have the hardest time. We're great at being nice to other people, but the words we use about ourselves are hurtful and are mean. The same thing applies. 
Speak kindly of yourself. View yourself positively. Words can be used to damage yourself as much as they can be used to damage other people as well. And so as we close, the challenge this morning is this. It's very simple. Practice encouragement. Practice encouragement. That's it. That's simple. But reality is, it's probably something every single one of us in this room need to do more often. Who likes when somebody says nice things to them? Everybody. Everybody probably does. It feels good. It is nice. It's kind. If everybody in this room likes that, how come we don't go do that more often for one another? Go out, start practicing encouragement. Find a few people this week in your life that you go, I can send them an encouraging text. When I see them in person, I can encourage them. Maybe you're sitting here right now thinking about a few people in your life who you've been rude to or you've been mean to recently. Maybe you just need to go to them and apologize for the mean things that you've said. That's the step in the right direction of using your words in a way that is healing and that is loving and is not going to haunt people. All right, let's pray. Lord, I pray for these students uh, that they just know the power of the words that they use, uh, that they are significant and they are important and they can do a lot of good, but they can also do a lot of damage. I pray for them in this room that they can go out and they can represent you with their language, with their words, with their speech. Lord, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen.